All right, let's go ahead and start this again. We are going to be playing some Crossfire the, on the Darlantis server. And um, if you want to get started yourself, I'm going to encourage that you go to this website, darlantis.com, and follow the instructions there on how to download the game client and make sure you're logging into the Darlanta server, which is where I'm going to be playing. And we've got some good gifts and uh, bonuses for people that drop by from the stream. Just mention that you're watching the Twitch stream and we'll get that taken care of. All right, so <clears throat> this is, I guess, episode three. And we just finished taking our Conan the Barbarian, or actually, I guess, Half-Orc. And getting him quickly up to level 4. So, if we pop back over here real quick, we will see that we have uh, some skills, a little bit of literacy. We're level 3 in literacy, find traps, disarm traps, one-handed weapons. We are just entered the game right here from where we left off in the inn got some items that we picked up last time. It looks like we might need to identify some of those. We'll do that real quick. This um, video is going to be about solving the Goblin Chief quest. I've asked that players, um, in fact, I think I was giving away $50 uh, a couple of weeks ago to any player that, um, well, it was going to be uh, drawn from a hat. But uh, any player that was able to finish this quest, which is going to take me about an hour, I guess. But if you're able to finish that in a weekend, three-day weekend actually, it's going to give away $50. So we do those kind of giveaways quite often. I'm going to try to do that more as we get more players in our Darlanta server here. And um, anyway, I'm going to show you all how to do that. So could have made 50 bucks in about an hour. Let's see. So where we want to start off first, I guess, is up here at the upper right. Uh, Conan, character's name, level four right now. First thing I want to do, hit points down here, spell points, food, experience points. Looks like we need about 16,000 to get up to our next level for the character. We're about 8,500 experience points at the moment. So let's go ahead and do that, uh, a couple of things here real quick. First off, Let's get ourselves out of the inn. We may as well take advantage of this and read these, this book. So I'm going to use my R button, which is going to examine and also pick up. I don't necessarily need to pick this book up, but I will go ahead and middle click on that to read it. It looks like we gained a little bit of experience. We're at 88.55 now, and I don't need to keep it. I'll just drop it back down. This is where I usually stand, uh, Rock 808. My character, the admin character right here um, as well, if you need any help. I'm not always watching the game, and so it would be better if you had a urgent message or something to get in touch with us on Discord. Uh, Discord link is posted in the description of this video as well. Well, let's go ahead and make some rounds to get some experience. So right now, as we see, we're at 88.55 experience. And so let's come over here first into the arena and read these couple of books. So we're just going to A to activate, to activate and activate. So we're already at 97.31 for those three books. If you do not know what those books say in the, here in the messages section, I would encourage that new players actually read those. I've already read those in the past, so again, right now I'm just interested in getting the experience. And let's come up into here as well, into the workshop, the smithery workshop. We will activate that and activate this book as well. Get the experience points for those two things. Come back up over to here. The House of Power. And around the back side of this. A couple of books we can activate. Each of those. 
and just make some rounds to beef up our experience a little bit. Once you have quite a bit of, once you're quite a bit higher level, making these rounds right here might not necessarily be that beneficial. It takes a little bit of time to do, but as you can see, we're already at 12K experience from the 8,000 that we started with. And it's pretty easy to, to, to do that for these low level characters. So I'm level four now in literacy and um, getting close to be level five. And the main reason I'm interested in that is to build up my hit points. Right now I've got 80 hit points and to go defeat the Goblin Chief might help to have a few more hit points than we've got right now. We can also come down over to here, to the post office. There's a couple of things. One thing I'm also doing, uh, if you come up here to Colette and you use the command say, uh, you can just say help first off. She'll tell you, do you want to buy or receive packages? So one thing that we're doing in the Darlanta server is every hour that a character is playing in the game, um, you will get a loot crate of some random gift. And um, sometimes those loot crates are pretty decent. Other times they might not be all that great. But if you're getting them every hour and you're staying online, even if you just camp out in the game, keep your character logged into the server, then you could still uh, get some pretty good prizes for that. So I'm going to say receive. And look at all these loot crates that I've got for just sitting in the game. And if I middle click on this a couple of times, I get some waybread. I'll left click to bring it into my inventory. Middle click this, scroll over, move curse, left click to bring it into my inventory. Middle click a couple of times to open it. And left click. There. I'm not going to open up all these right now. Uh, something else that we can do in here as well is we can come over to this. Notice that down here there's a manual and a prospectus and a table. So there's a couple of things on this uh, table that we can read both of these items. And we can middle click again. If we look at my experience, uh, it's 12.1 thousand. Middle click that, 12.4, middle click that, 12.7. So reading both of those gave us the experience. One of the main things I want to point out here is if you're just looking at this table, you only see the book on top and not the items underneath it. So sometimes looking at what's in your view or what's on the floor, what's on this tile is important. And um, then also the fact that we can middle click on these items to activate them without actually having to pick them up if for some reason we can't pick up the item or maybe we just don't want to pick up the item. I guess something else that could be kind of good over here is the score and message board. If you have something that you want to say, maybe to a person, you can write down a message. If I activate that, um, here we can say help. So if we get a little message here, it's a public message board, we could say help. And uh, here, the list of commands, we can list, write, and remove the messages if we had written some messages. So I'm going to say list the messages. And here I wrote a test. Somebody is looking for a ring of ruling. And so you can post little messages if you're looking for something. Does anyone know where I can find emeralds? Awesome. Very good. And I will put in here um, so we're going to say to the message board the right command and then the message emeralds might be in the dwarf caves under the temple of Ostrai. And then if we say list again, going on here? Did I do something wrong? Hmm. Oh, 
Looks like I <laughs> didn't have my space. Let's try that again here. Say, right. Emeralds might be in the dwarf caves under Temple of Mostrai. I could spell it right. So now we'll say list again. And here we can see that we did add our new message once we do it correctly. And we can pass on information to other players this way, perhaps. I'm going to go ahead and get us continued on with our quest for today. Again, we can step on a building. Press the... should be able to... Press the A to activate. reason that's not opening up. Interesting. I'm not sure why that would be. Oh, did I, maybe I messed up my A key as I, <laughs> as I pay a little bit more attention. I may not have a key binding for that. I mean, just um, one thing I can do here, come to client, key bindings. I'm gonna look at my A key. A is globally set to apply. Something does seem very strange here. I'm gonna bind the who command to the key W, so then I can just press W and see who's logged in here. And a few players. And I'm also going to Use unbind command. See what keys we've got. Looks like key 23 is bound to the A for apply. I'm gonna unbind that and try that to rebind it. Maybe something got messed up. So let's unbind key 23. Let's get back to our messages section here. And then we will bind, apply to the A key, try it again. Hmm. Curious as to why I'm not able to, oh, oh my goodness. Very frustrating thing. One of the issues that we're still trying to work out here, look at my um, uh, inventory. I've got an open container and because that container is open, uh, silly me, um, the A that is being applied is actually working on that container rather than just my walking around. So I've got to close that box and now I can walk into a building and press the A. Yeah, that is something that I'd like to change um, but for right now, that's the situation that we're in. All right, so let's come back over here. Let's move up over to here. We've got some more reading to do. 
activate these books, getting us up a little higher. Something else I like to do while I'm in here, I like to pick up all of these um, pieces of food. And if we come down to this table right here, we did this in the last demonstration, but I'm going to show it again. We can activate the table, of course. Here the desks, the desk opens up. We see this Proverbs, and it's actually the same Proverbs we've got right here as a good citizen. If I middle click and read that, then here it says, you open the Proverbs to reading, and this is the kind of almost like the quest that we're going to start with, or this might be a uh, clue that would lead you to the quest that we're going to start. A feast fit for king gains valued prizes, and so um, once we start to eat at the king's table, uh, or at least in the uh, castle rooms, then we should be able to get some more prizes. Royal service begets honor and title and gifts, so as long as we are doing things in service for the king, um, then that is going to benefit our character. A royal title uh, prefers respect and freedom. And so I think what this is referring to, the hint is we will be able to leave the city a little bit easier and all that kind of stuff and so on. There's a couple of other clues here as well. But that's really all that we need to do here for now. I'm going to come out. Since I picked up that food, one of the things that we can do with that food is bring it over here to this altar. And I'm going to find that food. I've got 14. I really only need 10, but I'm going to drop all of them. I want to drop all 14. 10 got used. Four is left, which I'll pick up. And then we can get access to this ring. I'm not going to wear it, but I am going to pick it up. We will want to um, check it out and have it identified before we start wearing things. And as you can see, now I'm at 14.4 experience. So just by doing those few things, I've got uh, a little bit more experience, which is nice. Looks like um, I've got some items I could sell. Not a lot of platinum or anything at the moment. And so one of the things that I might decide to do is come down here to this well and get some good gifts. And there's a key some whey bread. Something that I personally want to be very careful of is I don't want to be carrying a bunch of weight. Right now it looks like if I sort this stuff based on weight, I've got some food rations. Those four food rations are the heaviest thing on me. And uh, the more that I'm carrying, the slower my character is going to be. And so I kind of want to make sure that I'm not carrying too much and um, when I'm fighting. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just drop a lot of these cartons. So I'm carrying not quite so much. Maybe drop those food rations as well. I'll wait to pick up the whey bread till later. I'll make sure that my sword is wielded, everything is ready. I've got some not too great weapons, which is one of the reasons I'm going to come into this. Uh, let's hop back up here again coming down here into this dry well we can see and uh, there is a pretty good spiked shield in here is what we're going to go after. Tell you what, let me, um, not in a great habit of viewing my stream, but maybe I ought to go ahead and do that. I ought to go ahead and do that. And Maybe we'll mute that so I don't hear myself repeat. All right. So uh, let's see. We'll pick up the key and oops, pick up the key and then get ready for a little battle. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is search this door plenty of times first. Make sure there's no traps on it. As you can see over here, searching more and more. I think sometimes around 20, 30 times I'd feel safe that there's not a... Um, a trap on there. Notice also for some of you that prefer the JX client, I'm, I'm using the GTK client. I'm also using the Darlantis uh, layout. And um, if you come up under upper left client and go to configure and then interface, there's the Darlantis client. Uh, or the layout is Darlantis UI. And so 
that is kind of the layout that I prefer. It's got the map over here and I've increased the map scale to, I think this is 175%, which looks a little bit nicer. That's one of the reasons people might, or people have said they like the JX client is for the map size, but this is uh, I think pretty good. Then I can easily see a lot of really good information. My inventory over here, my messages, my critical messages. So if I'm doing a whole bunch, if I'm getting a whole bunch of very fast messages doing bat during battles, then um, I can still see what people are saying to me under here, or maybe some other critical messages. Uh, a couple of other bits of information that I like is to see my stats bars and weapon and strength and all that kind of stuff right over here pretty quickly and easily. What's on the floor underneath me. And then my skills, it's kind of nice to see those uh, increasing and what is increasing uh, each time I'm doing things, especially for the videos like this. So now that I'm pretty, feel pretty good about uh, the fact that this door isn't trapped, I'm going to go ahead and step through and then, of course, try to kill these guys here. Notice one thing, one of my strategies here is I'm looking at my hit points. I've got 80 hit points and I'm just standing here and not really taking a lot of damage, a whole lot of damage here. It is every time I'm regenerating hit points, uh, it's costing me some food, so I got to be careful of that. But, and I don't want these guys to get behind me, but I do want to battle in this doorway so fewer of these guys can get me at once. And, um... Of course, some of them, once they're hit, they're coming up behind me, and maybe I want to be real cautious about this. If I start taking a lot of damage, um, I'm going to want to run away. But I think I can get in here at this point. Oops. Kill these generators real quick. So, as you can see, with my constitution, and this is one of the things I like about playing a fighter to start off with, I can just run into these rooms pretty easily. And do the, the battling that I need. Let's make sure that we kill all these guys here so they don't take or abuse any of my items that I've left. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's see. Something else that I like to do is some of these monsters will pick up and use other items against you. When I want to pick up items, one thing that I've found that I really want to do is I want to uh, let's check out my bind keys again. Unbind. I'll show all my bind keys. And so what I've done is I've replaced my R key, the R key without any modifiers, no modifiers. I have examine the item and take the item or pick it up, right? So within one keystroke, just by pressing the R, I'm examining the item and taking the item. And if you want to see how to do that, I've already done it, so this is probably going to fail. But I start a command with a single quote. I'm going to press the or type in bind, and then the commands that I want to use. So examine, semicolon, take are the two commands that I want to use. I'm going to press enter on that and then it says uh, here push the key that we want to use. I'm going to press the R key and looks like the key binding is saved. So it looks like I was able to overwrite it without deleting it first which is nice. So then when I press the R key it's going to first examine it and tell me what it is a little bit about it and then it is going to pick it up and so now I have the the sapphire uh, here. One thing that will allow me to do if I'm examining these items is once I get some different skills and some things, I will be able to, or just examining items might increase my uh, proficiency or skills at certain, uh, or experience at certain skills. So I'm just gonna press the R a couple of times, press the R, and uh, here notice that I've got a club and 771 one-handed weapon experience. When I press the R, didn't get anything that time. Over here, I've got some bows, 
771 when I press the R, 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 R a couple of times. Keep pressing the R on some of these. What I'm hoping, I I even picked up the table right there. And then I can drop all these items. Again, I don't want to be carrying too much, so certainly the table, the bows, all this kind of stuff here will drop. We'll come back and get that later. We don't necessarily want to drop everything. If we get into serious trouble, it's good to have those balms of return home, but there's some things that we don't particularly need to carry around with us. And maybe that's good enough for now. We don't need those rubies or diamonds in the sack. All right. And one thing I'm hoping with the examine is to perhaps get a little bit more experience with my one-handed weapons. We'll try that again a little bit later. So let's do a bunch of searching. Searching five times, 13 times, and keep going. I think by about this point, if we haven't seen a trap yet, it's pretty probably pretty safe. So of course the monsters in here are going to be a little bit more challenging. So we will again let them come to the doorway, but not get too much closer than that. Oops. If I I'm holding the control key and I'm using the directional keystroke to run in that direction, which is a little bit easier. I'm waiting until they come to the doorway. If I bust past them, I will step back and wait for more to come. This is probably the best way. That way only one of them can attack me at a time through that doorway. Even if I'm standing right here in the doorway, then three of them are attacking me at once, and that can be a little bit more damaging but it's pretty acceptable right here. I don't want to be running out of hit points too quickly. We've got one more, actually two more rooms that we want to do before we can get that spiked shield. I definitely want the spiked shield before I go fight the goblin chief. I guess it's not a requirement, but since we're already here this far in the room, I'm just going to Try to kill off these generators real quick. I also don't want anyone to use this scroll, so I'm gonna try to get on top of it and just take it and, and finish them off here. Again, let's go make sure nobody's hanging out back here. Kill them off as well. And again, when we come back here, we'll just press the R a bunch of times. Notice here, my one-handed weapon is 1381. Let's just see if we can press the R to examine any of these items and see if we get any new experience for that. Doesn't look like it this time. I want to clean out the rooms from those items just so no other monsters can grab the items and use them against me. Bring them back over here where they're a little bit more out of the way and safer. Do not want to try anything on until we get a chance to... Um, the things that are lightweight and also that I really don't want uh, to accidentally lose, especially these scrolls or wands that a monster could pick up and use against me, I might hold on to those. Some of these other things like the swords and the bows, um, it doesn't matter too much if the monsters use those things against me. Definitely want to keep the ring. Alright, so let's come back over here. I think we're ready for this next door. Again, hold down the S to search. I'm going to search a bunch of times. Monsters in this next room will be a little bit more challenging. And after so many times, I think we're safe to open the door. Again, I'm going to use the control key to run in that direction, but as soon as I 
break through there. I'm going to back up. We want to run just to make sure that we're attacking as fast as we can. Sometimes some of these guys might get hurt and then they're going to try to flee. And they try to flee sometimes like by going around the side of me. It's another reason why I want to make sure that there's no scrolls sitting back in the previous area. If they're easy enough to hit, I might go ahead and attack some of them here too, but I'm going to be real careful with that. I want them to get too filled up in this other room here. I might try to see how far I can go in here. Notice that I'm taking some damage. Um, down to 70 health points there for a moment. It's not necessarily where I want to be. So stay in this doorway as much as possible. Have them come to me one at a time. If they're easy enough to trace down, I will. But got to be real careful with that too. Now I think there's fewer in this room, so I'm going to try to... Look at that, I went up a level. So now my total health points is 89 max. It's nice. And again, that's what we're trying for before we go attack the Goblin Chief. As you notice, if I'm down into this room, I'm down to 57 health points. It's not great. Again, so we'll just back up into the doorway. A little bit more. Let them come to me. Check our food, make sure that we're not running too low on food. The more damage we're taking to restore our health costs food. Look at all that, those goodies down there at the bottom. We don't want to walk down there right now though. The monsters might go down there, and if they walk on top of those items, they might try to collect those items themselves, perhaps use them against us. So I'll just keep them up here a little bit longer. And now it seems like it's pretty easy pickings. And then I'm just going to come down here and R, R, R a couple of these things real quick and then run back up again, maybe R a couple of times here, R a couple of times there. And again, just picking up a bunch of stuff. We can give them less to pick up, less items for them to use against me. We noticed that there were some generators on the far left-hand side of this room, but they are, looks like most of them are just about out by now. Let's finish off some of these wounded guys that have been running away down this hallway. And I don't like to see them down here. Alright. I think we're just about wrapped it up with these knolls. Just a few more over here, it looks like. We'll kill the gnolls and the last generators. Those generators can bring in some good money too, so we kind of want to pick those up as well. All right, once it's safe, now I can press the R key to pick those up. Again, let's just double check. I'm at 3,086 one-handed weapon experience. Thirty eighty-six. See if I get any more just by examining items. All right. Let's drop these things off down here. No corpses. Pretty heavy, don't want to be carrying that into the next room for sure. Monsters will be even harder in the next room. So I really want to make sure that I'm as light as possible. 
Also, the only reason that I'm dropping these things off back here is because I've played this map enough that I know that I can do pretty well at controlling the fact that um, uh, monsters won't come back here, or I'll be able to stop them before they do. All right, okay. I guess that's good enough for now. And this, in this room, there is a ch ogre chief that um, is going to have a spike shield, and that is what we want. The spike shield not only has better protection for us, but it is also going to allow uh, some extra damage for our normal weapon attack. And so that's going to be a good thing as well. Notice also I've been doing some attacks. Uh, so much attacking with my one-handed weapon. I'm now level two in one-handed weapon. And that's something else that we want. Not only our overall character level up here, level five, to gain us more hit points. I've got 89 uh, hit points now. But also we want our skill at the one-handed weapon. If we're going to go and battle this goblin chief, we want to be able to have better fighting skills. And that's going to be nice to have also. All right, so we've searched enough times. Don't, it's amazing, none of these doors had traps. Usually at least one or two of them does. So we will try to kick open that door. Again, these guys are a little bit stronger. So we're gonna make sure that we are standing far enough away or into the doorway. So only one of them is hitting me at a time. Even still, I gotta kinda watch my hit points down to 63, 65. Don't really like that. Would much rather have better armor, shields. Down to 47, gotta be careful. Even with just one of these guys hitting me. Oops, oops, now they're out. It's not going to be good. No, nope, they're going to start surrounding me, so we'll just back up to this next entrance here. It'll give me a little time to heal. Also, I can come over here and if I have a healing potion, I could use it, but I see that I don't. So... We'll just... Do the best we can. This guy is pretty tough. So this is a tough ogre and he's probably got the spiked shield. So I'm gonna, yep, there it is. So we're gonna pick that up. This is one thing where I think I'm just gonna put it on. My armor two and 32 goes down to a little bit better armor class. The reason that I feel that I can just pick that up and use it, because every time that I've seen that spike shield, it is blessed. And as a plus one shield, it does more damage, or allows me to do more damage per attack. And so I'm in this pretty difficult fight here at the moment, actually. Oops, now we're down to 19 hit points. That's way too low. And I don't really like that. So we're gonna we're gonna exit out. Find those that stairwell, come back up to here. And just sit up here and wait for a little bit. If we had healing potions, that would be better. Get healed. But it doesn't take too long to wait for this. All right. And it looks like we'll have to back up to the next room now. Also, look at our food situation. Um, the healing has brought us down here, so it might be a good time to eat some of this whey bread. So I'm just going to middle click on that. Brings our food bar all the way back up. I think we're ready to go back in. We've got... Uh, 89 hit points set to max. Let's see what I'm carrying. I'm carrying a few things, but again, nothing, nothing overly heavy. So I think we're ready to go back in. 
come down to here and I'll just wait by this door for them to come to me. One at a time, that's what we still want to do. So I have the shield and that's really all that I need. Nothing else in here is going to be overly interesting. And if you wanted to just be done at that point, you could. But because there's not a whole lot of these ogres left, I feel like um, I could get some more experience and in preparation for the goblin caves. And I need that experience anyway. It would be nice if I had an extra one or two levels. Not only just for my hit points. Let's see if we can get our hit points above 89. But also for the one-handed weapon skills. Notice my one-handed weapon skill is at 5400 experience. I'm level 3 now. I can get that to 8,000 experience. That'll get us another level on that, which would be good. Notice I'm level 5 for my character. So if I could get up to at least level 6 or maybe 7. I would... Get me a little bit more uh, hit points, should be useful as well. You'll see I'm ducking down into the 58 hit points. I want to be really careful. You kind of want to watch it um, whenever you're down to about half. So if 90 is my max, when I get around 45, which is about where I'm at, I really want to start being more cautious. The only reason I'm pushing it a little bit is because I can see there's only three more ogres right here at this doorway. All right, so there's probably more ogres down through there, but I don't want them to use these things. Let's just pick all this stuff up while we're here. There's a lot at this doorway. <laughs> This will be good money. A couple of things here, perhaps. A lot of things at that doorway as well. And we can just drop all that stuff here. So some ogre corpses. Yeah, lots of heavy stuff. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this shield that I had to begin with. And when I do, you'll notice here... You dropped the shield, the gods who lent it to you retrieved it. So that was the shield that my character originally started with. Unfortunately, I lose it. There's no way you can sell it. There's no way you can do anything. But I've got this much better vicious spiked shield. I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to left click on that, which locks it into place. So I cannot accidentally drop it. That's what I want to make sure to do. And again, we might want to lock in. I'm going to hold down the shift key, left click our chain mail, left click our sword. To lock those things into place so I don't accidentally drop these perhaps more important things that I have. If it's locked, it'll have the asterisk, so I know this is already locked. If I try to left click and drop it, it says I can't. The item is locked. Um, if I wanted to lock some of these other things, I could. Food, balm, maybe we want to lock those so we don't accidentally lose our balms or return home, which can really get us out of difficult situations. Um, can't drop the spike shield now, just want to test that, so that's good. Let's lock in this amulet, let's lock in these scrolls perhaps. And um, I don't think some of this other stuff matters. That key, couldn't really do anything with that key. That was a key that we had the uh, ability to do something in, our, in the tutorial. So it doesn't really matter that we lose that. Alright, so now that I'm Quite a bit better on my weight. Let's run back over here and finish these guys off, perhaps. 
It's not good to be in the middle of them. As you can see, already down to 50, 38. Uh, it's not good. Uh, I might die. Yep, died. Great. So that's not good at all. But the good thing is I do keep my shield, all that kind of stuff. And so what we'll do is come back real quick. And grab a bunch of these items and we'll go sell some stuff and we'll start the real adventure which is probably what most of y'all are here for anyway pick up this boy bread all right and up more and more of this stuff. So now, as you can see, I have so much stuff over here, it says that it's too heavy and I can't pick it up. Item's too heavy for you to pick up. So I'm gonna escape out of here. This gives me a good opportunity to show you a little bit about why running is a little bit better than uh, holding down the, the direction movement key. So if I, let's say I hold down the direction movement key you can see how kind of laggy it looks. That's just because of the weight, right? And I'll show you it's going to be faster in a little bit. But now, if I let go of that, if I running here, and as soon as we get behind this orange piece, I'm going to let go. And it takes me a, another step further. And if I'm holding down the control key and I'm moving, as soon as I let up the control key, right away, it stops my movement a little bit ahead of time. So what we want to do at this moment is we're moving really slow. So let's come into the magic shop. Game is not laggy. It is the fact that I'm carrying so much weight. There's a little bug, I think. It shows that I can carry 2,500 kilograms or weight, whatever, and the weight is negative 0.0. Of course, that's not really true. I am carrying quite a bit of weight. First thing we want to do is come back over to here. Oops. And I'm going to sort this based on the names of items. So my platinum and whatever pieces will be over here. I've got some silver, both locked in and not locked in so i'm going to unlock this these coins we'll hold the shift key and left click on that unlocks them which adds all that silver together i'm going to left click on the silver and that's going to drop it but one thing that it does is it allows that altar to cast detect magic so now all of these items that i had on me if they were magic turn out in blue and pick that silver back up and then i can move down to the next altar here this is the altar for uh, detecting curses. I want to see if any of those items are cursed. So again, we will left click on our silver. Ah, some cursed things. A couple of cursed things in red. Those are definitely items that we can sell. Pick up our silver again. Now that we've determined that, we will just run over here. Seems a little laggy, but again, it's just because I'm carrying so much weight. Anything that's cursed, we can drop first small shield there's an amulet that's cursed unfortunately that's a bummer drop that too so then we had these cartons i'm going to middle click twice take that out and then middle click this one take it out middle click take it out middle click take it out so i'm getting a lot of these goodies just because i sat in the game for a while there's 200 platinum that's nice some balms will return home, tech magic, so I don't need to eat, spend the money. And these other cartons are empty from previous. All right, let's close all those cartons. And then I'm just gonna drop those cartons. And as you can see, I get three gold pieces for each of those cartons that are now empty. Uh, let's see, these daggers, it's magic, but um, I think I'm interested in something a little bit different. I'm going to drop a lot of these items here. 
That's a short sword that's magic compared to my long sword that's not magic that I have already. So let's drop some of this other stuff and then we can test to see. So I'm getting quite a bit of gold here for all this. Here's a small shield, but that vicious spike shield is going to be much better. So we want to use that. So we'll sell this stuff. I don't already have any headwear, so I may as well keep this headwear and wear it. I'll show that to you in just a minute. Some food here we can go ahead and sell and food rations. Let's keep the whey bread. Uh, let's see. All these corpses can bring in some platinum. That's good. Ogre's heads. These monster parts. There's the very tough ogre. All right, so lots of parts there. And let's see what else we got. Designer notes for leather. I can read that. So I've got my literacy is uh, 10,331. And if I read that, so that got us a little bit more literacy experience, but then I'm just going to sell it. I'm going to try to read this again, but I already read it, so it doesn't give me any more experience. I'll just drop that. Emeralds, diamonds, sapphires, a table even. What's that table going to get me? A table got me one gold. Those three broken null generators, 15 platinum. Those are really nice. Some diamonds there. I just like carrying around keys sometimes. It's easier to get through doors, even though uh, generally I might give these to my weaker characters. If I had a uh, priest or a, a wizard or something like that, I might give the keys to them because they'll have a harder time breaking down the doors. They would want to use the keys more often. All right, and we can go ahead and sell that. Uh, go ahead and check if these sacks have anything in them, which they don't. I'm going to just close them and I'm going to sell them. Get a few more extra gold for that. All right, so now that we're here, let's check out what our armor is like. So we've got an armor class of one. Again, the lower is better. An armor um, uh, absorption of 33. So when we try on that headgear, now we're down to armor class zero. It's harder to hit me. So I, I had a total of four wearing one let's drop those three to sell them and we will lock this into place with shift and left click all right um let's check out our little bit of our armor here so one of the things that i want to do is um i want to uh, check out a few things one of the things i'm going to show you all first is the help command you can get a command of help help topics commands or help on a specific command and I'm going to get help on commands and we can see all of these commands that we can do these are going to be the main game commands and there's communication commands some of these things might do somewhat interesting things coin toss or play a game of work knuckle which is a kind of a dice type game but then other things are just kind of um, things your character can do blush bow and so on but one of the things that I want to look for specifically in my commands up here is uh, things like body. If I want to see what uh, type of armor that I'm currently uh, holding, maybe I want to make this window slightly bigger for the moment. So my arm rate, my range slot, arm, body, head. Am I using something in those slots? Do I have an available slot to use something? So this way I can kind of see how many I have and how many are being used for certain things or uh, available, I should say. Uh, for those slots, make sure that I've got, I'm fully protected as much as possible. So again, that was with the body uh, command. Some things that I might also want to check um, is we've been examining some things. That's good. Let's say high score could be something else. So if we want to see what our what the high score is like, oops, we'll type in high score, C O R E. Got to spell it right. 
and here in this make this window a little larger and you can see up here at the top vermeil xanax clover nine and so on I have the highest scores down here near the very bottom uh, let's see where we're at I think I'm going to be right in here somewhere. Maybe bashful. I'm not see There I am right there. High score list. Let's get help commands. And let's see. What am I looking for specifically? Give me a moment to look through here. Something else that you might want to check out is you can do with command MOTD, message of the day, to give you a little bit more messages of the day. So Darlantis Crossfire here, hosted by David, Rock, me, and um, Daily Loot Crates. That, that is actually fixed right now. We're getting those. Um, but you can have some basic help and you can also see what the message of the day is there's also a command that you can use let's do the command news see what's the latest news here again daily loot crates a little bit more about those and so on let's get help oops help on commands statistics i think that's the one that i'm looking for so if i do the command of statistics one of the things that we can see with this right here is total experience, experience to the next level, max strength, and peace of mode, my damage per second. That's one of the things that I'm really interested in beefing up. I want a higher damage per second because some of these weapons might have a higher damage value, but they are slower to wield, and that might not necessarily be all that great. So right now with this long sword, if I... Uh, left click on the, to see it, it says damage plus four, weapon speed is eight. And if I look at this short sword, here the damage, it, well it says it's unidentified, right? Don't really know. So let's come back out of the room here. And I only want to identify that one short sword. So I'm going to drop a lot of these other items. I'm gonna come over here and see what I'm holding that isn't identified. So let's drop that ring. And um, I think I've got enough platinum. 289 platinum. But I can identify three items. Those three items at 20 gold pieces each, which is going to be fine. May as well identify the ring too, since it's only one additional item. So here, 20 gold for each item that needs to be identified. And one of the things I like to do is I like to left click on the map somewhere so I can get some uh, messages to show that I'm seeing the tiles there. And then that way when I drop the platinum onto this piece here, I can easily see those are the messages I've already seen. But now I have a ring of plus one weapon class. That would be a good ring to have. That's going to help my weapon uh, as well. Short sword damage is going to be only a plus two as opposed to the plus four for the, uh, the long sword that we had. But with a weapon speed of five, it actually might be more helpful for us. We'll have to see in a minute. Um, here our coif is going to give us a little bit more um, armor class, but there is a spell regen penalty. I'm not using spells, so not too bad. The spike shield is a plus one, but also gives a higher damage as well and an, a greater armor. So that's, again, one of the main reasons that I want this before we go fight the goblin chief. So I will uh, pick up these items again. And now one thing that we can do is we can see that our Weapon class is 18, damage is 15, and if we run the statistics command again, in fact, let me bind that. So I'm going to say bind, so I don't have to type all that out every time. Bind statistics, that's what key. I'm just going to use the Q button. And so now when I press Q, I can easily just see that every time. 
uh, using the long sword, which is wielded 96 damage per second. If I wield the short sword and do the Q again, 107 damage per second. So that short sword is much better. All right. All right. And so we will lock that short sword in. Unlock the long sword. In fact, I think I can drop it. And because that's the one that the gods gave to me, my original sword, don't need it anymore. I've got a better weapon now. And um, let's see. All right, so we're wearing our shield, chainmail, all that kind of stuff. Oh, let's wear this. Since our weapon class is 18, damage is 14, and I'm going to wear that ring. So now weapon class is 17. Again, lower the better for the weapon class, lower the better for the armor class. So I'll lock in that ring as well. So now I've got a little bit better stuff. I think I'm ready to go deliver some damage to the goblins. Let's come back over here, just make sure that I'm not carrying anything that I don't particularly need. I got some bombs return home. That's going to be really good. Let's also check out something else here. I'm going to do the command quest list all. And I'm going to see what I've got. So it looks like I've I've completed getting past the locked gates, getting out of Scorn. I am, I've started the Scorn Nobility quest. And if I do a command quest info on number three, so it's quest number three in this list, then I will see here, quest Scorn Nobility, we want to rise to the ranks. Again, that's what that uh, little note was saying earlier, rise to the ranks of nobility. Spoken to the Magistrate, uh, I think that was sometime earlier. And um, my quest is to get the head of the Goblin Chief. Some goblins who are said to live in the mountains have been making some nuisance. They live to the northeast of Scorn. Okay, so I've been asked to get the head of the Goblin Chief and return with his head. Great. So we'll do that. Also, as we're walking back out of this room, now that I've sold all that equipment, let's look how speedy my movement is. As I run down here, as you notice, I'm moving much faster. And as soon as I lift up on that control key, my character stops moving. All right, tell you what, one more little thing um, I could do. I could just come back down here into this, maybe pick up a bunch more of these items last minute. Try to kill this guy. Just a few more items, a few more of these guys. They're kind of scattered out. Get a little bit more experience. Oops, got a few of them in there still. All right. Down to 52 hit points, but I think I'll be fine. These guys are kind of damaged already, I think. All right, let's pick this stuff up. this stuff back here but there is some decent treasure and we're almost done with those uh, ogres so let's go ahead and finish those up and then what I'll do in the video is I'll set a little um, uh, chapter title so if you want to skip this part you can just skip the chapter to what you're looking for See what's in here. Oh, plus three axe. That might be pretty good. Might be better. Now let's see. I'm just gonna drop it for now. Make sure I'm carrying as little as possible. I need to go overboard with it though. 
All right, let's go finish off these ogres and get that last little bit of treasure. Yeah, just a few. May as well pick up my gravestone as well. <laughs> can sell that. Oh, nice diamond. That'll be some good money. Beyond this next door is Mad Men, which is again even more uh, challenging than the Ogres. And even though at times it would be good to go and get that extra loot that's over there, I'm really a lot more interested in just doing the Goblin Chief at the moment. Might as well pick up this table. We could sell it as well. Pick up all this loot here. All right. And then let's just go sell all this stuff. All right. First thing we want to do always, come back over here, see if there's anything worthwhile to keep for ourselves. So we will take a quick look at where is it? Hey, Mystical Meows, glad you're able to join in. Yeah. Kind of cool. It's fun to program it as well, design the maps. All right, so let's drop our uh, gold on there. Come down to the next one, drop the gold there as well. Able to see some of these things are poisoned or cursed items. Uh, how much are we going to get for these tables? A couple of gold pieces for those tables. My gravestone, a couple of gold for that. Some ogre corpses, got some gold there. All right. Clubs, stone axes, regular axes. So it looks like we've taken some, uh, or we've used up some of our food. And so because we have some magic monster parts, there are times when if you eat monster parts, you can gain um, protections for some things. So um, as you can see right now, I've got some protection against poison and armor. And I don't necessarily think that eating these right this moment are gonna give me any additional protections, but it is always possible that we could get additional protections against in, uh, various uh, diseases or things like that. And once we get up to 999, then we can go ahead and stop. Because then we start getting full and we might have some problems. But we'll just sell the rest. Spears, shields, daggers. All right. Now let's see. Short sword, hands. So there's the one we're keeping. Looks like we might have another one here. We will identify this one too, just in case it's better. But I... I bet they're going to be both plus ones. Let's see. Got a Darlanta's bonus gift there. I think that's... Um, what is that? 96 charges. I think it's bullet. I think it's a yeah, magic bullet. Oranges. Let's open up this container. There's a few things in that container. It's like... Point All right, we can drop that one. We can drop that box now, throwing stars, emeralds. And so here we got some gauntlets. I definitely want to see what's going on with those. We've already um, identified, or not identified, we've already uh, checked for magic and curses. And so gauntlets aren't cursed. So let's come down here 
AC is zero and armor is 33%. If I wear that, now it's 35% absorption, so it's better. We'll lock that in. And the null generators there. 25 platinum. Man, those generators bring in some good money. I also want to check this axe. It might be a better item, especially since it's a plus three. So let's use our Q bind that we've already set. Right now I'm at 107 damage per second. And if I activate the axe, now I'm at 127. So that's even better, right? So let's wield that one. And um, in this particular case, I'm just going to drop and sell uh, the short swords here. For a couple of silver. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible return on investment. Four silver for a plus one short sword. All right. Poison orc chop. Oh, well, let's see. Bolts, rubies, diamonds. Get rid of all that. All right, I think so. I think we're we're looking pretty good. We've got now AC of zero and a armor of 35. We've brought down our weapon class. We've increased our damage. We have 127 damage per second right now. We have this spike shield, which is contributing to that extra damage as well as some of our protection. So I think we're looking really good. Um, and we've got some magical items, Balms of Return Home, uh, Waybread for battling. So I think we're ready to do some stuff. Let's go here and um, I guess I'm going to put a marker right at this point of going to get the Goblin King. Again, we were told that the Goblin King is going to be in the northeast, outside of Scorn. So once we have, let's, just to make sure everyone knows where this is, um, if you come in here, if you haven't already started the Goblin Chief, then we want to come into this building right here, into this walkway, keep going on through, we'll come out the other side of it, come over to the castle, activate walk back in. We want to say hello to these magistrate folks. And here, have you returned with the Goblin Chief? So I've already started this quest, but it would, if, I, if you have not started this quest yet, it would give you the opportunity to say, yes, I want to start a quest for the king. And so you'll get started on the quest. So right now, they're asking me if I've already returned with the head, which I haven't. So nope, I'm not even gonna reply. That's where we get our first quest started. And so then we're ready to walk out. Once you start that quest, you will be able to get out through this gate. So this gate normally is not gonna open for you if you don't have a gate pass or if you don't know the password. But even if you just start the goblin quest, then walking over next to the gate will automatically, just wait a couple of seconds, the gate will lower. When you run down to the end of this, you can wait here all day, it's not gonna open, but we can come here and activate that switch. And after a few moments, this gate will open. And we're outside of Scorn, very good. So the first thing that we wanna notice is that we were told that the Goblin Caves are to the northeast of Scorn. So we come out and we immediately start going northeast and hey, look what we find. We find this thing we stand on it but notice that this is the Knoll's Grotto. This is not the Goblin Den. We can come in here if we want to real quick, but, and it is a place that we can adventure into, but this is not where we want to be, right? And this is a pretty fun area. We'll come and do it some other time, but we don't want to waste time on that right now. So, if we start back over here, that we've just left Scorn, and we come up this north road right here a little bit then right in here if we keep walking north we're going to find some more mountains and the mountains of course aren't letting us see very far into them 
but if we just walk a little bit, it should be right there. All right? So just right here in this little cove area. And there they are. And if we move on top of that goblin den, perfect. Exactly what we want. So we'll activate. And we start right off in a little section where we're battling. And if we activate this sign, it says this is a this is level one of a random map. And so I'm just going to quickly try to defend myself as much as possible. One of the things that I like to do in these mazes here is I like to find a back, uh, something with my back to the wall. And then I can now only attack one monster at a time. In this particular case, I'm not going to pick up any loot to weigh myself down. I can always pick it up later. Unless perhaps there's a, a, a wand or a, or a scroll, something that I wouldn't want someone else to pick up and use against me especially. And those things are pretty light as well. So, uh, one other thing that I'll, I'll point out about these random maps is whenever you start, and whenever you go down here, here's the ladder up or the stairs up. And so I know that the stairs down is going to automatically be at the opposite corner, diagonal corner from this square map. And so I don't know if I'm in the lower left or the upper right or, or the lower right right now. But as I start moving around, I can see, well, I can't go to the right anymore. I can't go to the left anymore. So now I'm just kind of making my way generally to the lower right of the map and it expands bigger and so what that tells me is that i was probably in the upper left of the map so now i want to make my way down to the lower right and again i don't really care about killing all these guys if i i don't really don't want to be in the middle of a bunch of them so one thing that i might try to do is put myself into a little corner um, find some kind of place fairly quickly kill everything off in the back, you know. So now I only need to fight one at a time if that was overly important. But again, right now, as you can see, I'm doing fairly well. I'm not really losing too many um, uh, health points. Of course, this is only level one. And I also want to come down here and Try to get to the lower right. I don't care about battling these guys too much. I just want to get through the level. To the lower... To the lower right of this map. I'm going to guess the staircase is down here somewhere. And indeed it is. And I'll activate to go down the stairs. So where am I now in this map? I looks like I could be in the upper left this level so I'm going to try to get to the lower right of this level again I'm not going to bother too much with um, it looks like a dead end there not going to bother too much with trying to attack I'm trying to get to the lower left Oops, there's some more armor I'm trying to get to the lower left it's going to be down here there's a generator. You know, I may as well kill generators. Even though I don't mind killing some of these guys, I'd, I'd rather not take longer than I have to. And indeed, here at the lower left, oh, there's a golden nugget. Interesting. Might as well pick that up. Moonstones, river stones, something. And we'll just get down here. So again, make sure that we are not getting attacked from multiple sides. So right here, just getting attacked from one. Now I can activate, read the sign. This is level three. I think if I remember correctly, the goblin den has five levels. So we're on level three. Also notice, looks like I got hit with something in critical messages. This is another reason I like this um, uh, layout because I can see critical message. I lost it in all of the messages up here. But, um, uh, so I was sick. So now I can see, uh-oh, can't control myself. <laughs> I guess I was hit by some kind of uh, thing. If I wanted to look back up, I could probably find out where I got hit. 
with some kind of a disease perhaps. Normally if you get diseased with that it could take away some hit points if you're already kind of low it could be very damaging or maybe more damaging but as long as you've got fairly decent health and as long as your constitution is high your strength you've got a good decent amount of hit points 89 then you can probably survive most of these things these illnesses or diseases and you're you'll be cured automatically after a certain amount of time so I generally ignore those for the most part um, and again, I'm not taking any damage, so I think we're pretty good. But what this really means is I do need to be searching these doors because I probably walked through a door without knowing it or even just bumped into a door um, and then got some kind of disease or uh, illness from some trap that was on the door. And once I, I've gone through there a little bit, Again, it looks to me like we're starting in the upper something. Upper left, upper right, don't really know. There's some generators. Let's knock these generators out really quick. I'm going to get underneath and go up so I don't actually run into that door as I do searches. See, if I would have been over here and if I would have head, headed uh, left and busted through that generator, I would have hit that door and gotten hit by that diseased needle. So another piece of strategy is angle yourself so you're in a good position where if you're running or moving and once that thing is destroyed you don't run into something on the other side accidentally so i'll search again i'll press d and disarm i successfully disarm it that's kind of good to do because we want to also build up our disarm traps and find traps skills as well uh let's see i'm trying to determine if i'm in the upper left or upper right of this map Looks like uh, store is pretty strong. Looks like I might have been in the upper left, so we'll just head to the, I mean the upper right. So I'll head to the lower left. I'm seeing some generators, so I'm just kind of going to knock out some of these generators while I'm here. Doesn't hurt not taking a whole lot of damage at the moment. Oops, don't want to run into that door. I'm trying to get to the lower left. And you know, since this whole wall to the left looks like it's pretty full, maybe it's and be beyond this door here. So we'll search a little bit and then we will run through. Yep, there it is, down there. And now I'll activate this sign. I'm on level four. So probably the next level down is the goblin chief and that level is a little bit harder hard enough that i want to be a little careful so it looks like we're probably in the lower left of this map i want to head to the upper right search doors for traps and after we search for a while we can bust through Trying to get to the upper right of this map, probably. Take out a couple of generators while we're at it. If they're easy enough. For some people, you might decide to take more time and um, get all this extra experience if you want to. It, it would be good to get the extra experience so by the time you get down to level 5 uh, maybe you'll have picked up a lot more loot, maybe you'll have sold it, maybe you'll have found even a better weapon um, and you have more experience which will get you more health points and maybe more uh, one-handed weapon points as well. Notice we found a rune of burning hands there so let's try to disarm that which we do successfully. So we can bust through that door now. I'm holding the control key in the movement to kind of run. That way, as soon as I see the door bust down, I can take my finger off of it. 
that was not the right place to go. So maybe it's up this little hallway around this side. Our generator will knock out real quick. And there it is. So now, this is level five. Notice there's no signs here. And this one for sure, it's not a random map. It'll always be the same. And so what I want to do is I want to definitely not run out too far too fast. Um, I don't mind taking a step back. But definitely I want to kill these guys off one at a time here. I want to make sure that I stay fairly close to this staircase in case I need to jet out of here real quick. I have a way to exit if I get too damaged. Eighty-nine hit points, still looking good there. Looks like I've cleared all the monsters out from that right-hand side, so that's good. There will be a ton coming in from the left. Check my food, make sure my food's still looking good. Make sure my hit points are looking good. I do not want goblins back there at all. Take those out. Not being as cautious as I could be. I'm using the control to run in those directions as well. At one of these points I'm going to find a goblin chief and he will be much more difficult, and I will be taking damage, for sure. So I want to keep my eye on that. When I start taking heavy damage, I am hitting the Goblin Chief, and I might want to just be aware of what's going on. And that, when that happens, I definitely do not want any goblins behind me for an escape route. All right. Looks like we're getting fewer of them coming around. It's good. I definitely do not want to walk too far past this point though because goblins can come around both the left and right sides of this. I don't want to be trapped when the goblin chief emerges. Definitely want this walkway pretty open. Don't mind exploring out just a little bit. I do want to be careful. Always coming back to this location. Make sure no one's sneaking up behind me. Come back to this location. Make sure we're not sneaking around the other direction. Checking my hit points. Still looking good. I don't think that I have attacked Goblin Chief yet. Oops, that was a bad idea. Uh, there'd be three of them there. Narrow halls are okay. Again, let's make sure we can get back to this point. I don't want any 
anybody sneaking up behind me? Alright. Looks like very few are coming from that direction anymore, which is good. Oops, do not want anyone to get on the other side of me. Let's back up a little bit more here. A couple of them are still coming around that other way. Lots of treasure here, huh? Some people like to turn on their auto pickup so their characters automatically pick up items they're walking on. I feel at this point that would be extremely bad because you would be picking up all this loot, weighing yourself down, slowing down your character, or it would feel like it's more laggy when really, again, it's not the lag, it's just that your character's carrying more. Your movement rate would be slower your attack rate would be sort of, ah, look at this. I think I might have found the Goblin Chief. I'm attacking, attacking, Goblin Chief. Let's back up a little bit more here. See, look at my hit points going down quite a bit. Let's see if I can get him. I might have to escape up these stairs. 23, uh oh, up, up. Activate, activate, get out of there. So I'm down to 15 hit points. And this is again another reason you might want to clear out this area before you start to go down. But I think that these guys are weak enough, for me at least right now, that I'm gaining more hit points than I'm losing. So I don't mind that too much. We'll slowly get back up there. In a health potion would have been really nice as well. Let's clear out a few of these guys up here. All right, we'll wait another moment or two. And then we will go back down the stairs. All right, we're back at the full strength. Food looks pretty decent. Let's go back down the stairs and attack him again. There we go, got him a time. Very good. Now what we want to do is look for that, uh, oops. I'm going to see if I can see the head of the Goblin Chief there. Let's come down a spot. Head of the Goblin Chief right here in my, my view. So I definitely want to pick that one up so we have that one in our inventory right now because that's our whole goal. I could leave right now if I wanted and that's another reason it's great to have these balms of return. I could instantly fly home right now. So um, I've been streaming for a little bit. I spent maybe a little bit more time underneath the or in the dry well than I had to. Uh, but I ended up getting the, the Goblin Chief. I could leave right now so you see how quickly it uh, will happen. Notice here, new objective, head of the Goblin Chief. I've recovered the head so I can just take it back. There's not a ton, well, there, there is some interesting treasure in here, and the rest of the goblins are not gonna be that uh, scary. So I now feel a lot more confident that I can just walk through the rest of the stuff. Again, let's search for these doors. There's some decent loot in here behind a few of these doors. Most of them are trapped. So it's a little odd to see that these aren't trapped, but this one isn't. And let's bust through there. and pick up these diamonds. Now at this point, I think we can probably just go ahead and start picking up all the loot. We're not in too much danger of being killed at this point. If I examine that chair, it's about one gold. Sometimes those chairs can be pretty expensive.
All right. More treasure in here. Search a few times, and once we feel pretty satisfied, we've got about 20 or 30 searches. Then I think we can uh, bust through that door. So as you can see, I completed this at level five of a character, and uh, it was very helpful to have the uh, spike shield and to get at least 89 uh, hit points. Because we did get kind of low there. And if we weren't doing as much damage and if we didn't have as much protection as we did, that Goblin Chief would have taken us out uh, a lot easier. Let's stand by both of these doors at once when we search so we can um, apply our search methods to both those doors at the same time rather than having to do each individually. Pick up these items. Boy, I would hate to do this quest with someone with not a strength of 22. Um, take a whole lot longer to knock down those doors. <laughs> First, um, if you had a higher enough magical character, then uh, of course you just use magic on those, right? I think we've got some more treasure up behind one of these doors up here. We'll search both of them at the same time. Found a blade trap on that one, which will disarm. I had a... Moments later, find a spike trap on the other one. So we'll disable... Uh oh I set off one of those traps. But I successfully disarmed the other one. All right, good enough. It is possible for some chests or, or, and or doors to be trapped multiple times. I think you'll see that more with higher levels or... Uh, in higher level dungeons, but it is possible. So don't just assume since you've disabled one trap that you're always good to go. I think on these lower levels though, it could be fine. Assuming that it's just trapped once. Now there's a ton of equipment here. I'm not even sure uh, what I want to take, or I'm pretty sure I cannot carry all of it. So we might decide a little bit later on what we want to carry up and what we don't. All right, so we got our head, let's go up. And again, um, I don't really care, or if I don't care, maybe I should say since I don't care too much about the rest of this or trying to find my way or battle my way out of this, and I've got several balms of return home. Maybe I'll just go ahead and do that uh, instead of trying to trying to fight my way. Again, but y'all could, if you wanted to, fight your way back up, pick up the treasure, come back repeatedly into the dungeon, sell more, pick up more, take it back home, sell it, and uh, continue that process back and forth for a time to long, until you get all the loot in these dungeons. For me, I'm just going to say that what I've got right now is good enough. Got the head, it's the main thing I wanted. So I'm gonna look at my balm of return home. Middle click on that to activate it. Moments later, it doesn't happen instantly, but soon I will be zapped home. And I can, you know what? Let's just come over here. Let's even return it first. Activate, come back to these guys, say hello again. Oops, caps lock is on there. 
have you returned with the goblin chief head? Yes, yes I have. Well, oops, we'll say that. Yes. Did that not work because I moved again? Yes. All right, head of the goblin chief quest or, is completed. Hero of Scorn. The next one is completed also. So now that I'm the Hero of Scorn, that that opening gate or the gate will open itself um, without needing a pass or anything, a password or anything like that from here on out, which is pretty good. New objective, Scorn Ability. I've been dubbed Knight. That's very good as well. I'm going to say hello one more time. And now it says, um, Hail, Sir Conan. Uh, would you like to prepare for further service? Absolutely, you want to keep doing these services. Um, there'll be harder and harder quests each time. And so I will say yes. It's not chat, we want to say yes. And so now it talks about the head of the Ogre Chief. And we'll do that one in another video here. Start off with that head of the Ogre Chief there. All right. In the meantime, let's finish up a little bit of this. So anytime that we come out of a dungeon, might be good to go back and sell our loot, get re-equipped. So the next time we start our next quest, we are good to go. Then my first steps are going to be to drop some gold and figure out what every everything I have is magic. We'll drop some gold on here, make sure that we discover curses, if any of that stuff was cursed. And then, now that we know what's magic and what's cursed, we have a little bit better idea of what to sell. So normal daggers, nope, not worth it. I've got this plus three axe, probably better than any long sword or short swords that I'm gonna find, although we might wanna test that. And it's easy enough to test. Again, Q will show my, um, damage per second and why is my damage per second not as high as it used to be what's happened here oh maybe my my carrying weight it's pretty high let's see if that gets affected as I drop things so let's drop some swords throwing daggers clubs clubs uh, oh, I'm wielding a shovel for some reason. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, let's wield our axe like we should. Press Q. 96. Still, we had it at 127, so um, if we're at 96, and if I drop bows, let's check our weight, drop goblin courses, orcs corpses, bows, and now I'm going to check my stats again. Still 96, so maybe those things aren't doing anything there. Normal goblin heads. We've already returned the goblin chief heads. We're going to drop food rations, leather armor, chops. Normal bones. Now well, let's see here. Hearts, heads, nuggets. There we go. 108 platinum for those few nuggets. Cloak right here probably isn't going to give me anything if I look at my armor AC of 2, armor 32, and wear that. Still AC 2, armor 32. It's not giving me anything there. For that. I'll go ahead and drop it. Uh, let's see. My armor had been a little lower. Did I accidentally undo something else by not applying my spiked shield as an example sell those swords two-handed sword we want to get rid of as well looks like for some reason I'm not wearing my uh, spiked shield so let's go ahead and uh, activate that. There we go. A little bit better armor now. Zero and 35. Let's wear those. Uh, here we're wearing these gauntlets, which is giving me AC zero and armor 35. Let's try these other gauntlets. Armor 36 with those gauntlets. It's even better. 
So we can shift and left click to unlock that and we can drop those gauntlets there. Uh, river stones, we'll just drop those for now. Torches we can drop for now. Drop all these things for now. We are getting some gold for those. I'm wearing the ring, which is important. Got some scrolls, coins. Let's lock this in with the shift and left click. That's locked in and being worn. We'll do a shift and left click. No, nope, we'll just do a right click to drop, drop, drop. My coif is locked in. Axe is being wielded and it is locked in. Alms of return home. You can drop those goblin feet. Jack boots. So let's take a look, oh, look here. They are magic. We're at AC 0, armor 36. Let's wear those jack boots. AC negative 3, 38. So that's really good jack boots. So we will. Um, we see that they're plus 2 even. We'll lock those in. Looks like I got another pair, which I'll drop and get two gold coins for. We can drop this shield since we've got that spike shield. If I'm interested in seeing if this um, long sword right here is better than the plus three axe, because we don't know what pluses the long sword is. Again, Q will show me I'm at 128 damage per second for my axe. We'll do a middle click and then a Q again, 160. Right, so in back here with the axe, 128, that long sword, 160. I think I like that long sword better. I could keep both of these. Maybe if I had an apartment, I'd want to hang on to the axe just in case something weird happened to my long sword. But in this particular case, um, oh no, I, I will hang. I will hang on to it. Um, maybe I'll use it for something else a little bit later. But we definitely want to lock in that long sword. Again, with my statistics bind key of Q, I can see that my damage is 160 uh, points per second, which is going to be good. Let's also check out our armor class right here is negative um, three with 38% um, protection. And what I want to do is wear my scale mail. I will middle click on that, negative four and 30. I suppose negative three and 38. And so I think I do like this scale mail a little bit better than my chain mail. Although, um, you know, it's, it's a big toss up. Do I want a lower AC and less or more uh, absorption of that? Personally, I think I'll I this time will probably take a little bit lower AC um, Something else that we want to keep in mind is if I'm wearing this chainmail right here, I'm at 160 damage per second. And if I'm wearing the scale mail, I'm also still looks good. 160 damage per second. Sometimes it's possible that different um, armors might actually affect your damage per second. So you might want to double check that again every now and then. But because this scale mail is magic, I think it's another reason uh, that I want to hang on to it. Also notice it's less weight, only 20 weight as opposed to 60. So that's good. So I'm going to lock the scale mail in with the shift. We'll unlock chain mail, sell that. Uh, and it looks like the gods took that back since that was my original one. But I, since I found better, it doesn't really matter. All right, I think we're pretty good. I'm going to sort this based on type now. So I can see a little bit better all my weapons together and all this kind of stuff. So make sure that I've got the, just a few weapons that I want. Shovel might be good for digging, so I'll keep, I'll hang on to that for some other adventure later. Scale mail, my shield, boots, gauntlet. So I just am checking right now that I've got one of each of these types and not that I have more than one, that I've got the best one. My ring, some waybreads, some potions. Looks like I've got some good scrolls there as well. Um, and then my coins down here. So I think I'm all set. It looks like I've gotten some good stuff. I think we're done with that adventure. Uh, one thing that I could do as well is I can come back up here and look at the question mark. 
but I've got some things that are not fully identified. So even though I see this is a plus three and a plus two, it's possible that these things aren't fully identified. And if each one of these is going to cost me 20 gold, that would be 100 gold total. I think I can afford it with my gold stuff down here. So I'll go ahead and step on this and I'll just drop on my gold. It cost me 100. I've got 66 left. But the thing is here, I've now identified fully what the gauntlets are, what the shovel is going to do. Look at the shovel, plus 12 damage to the sh with the shovel. Um, if, if I'm looking up here at this and I see longsword plus 3 and this shovel is plus 12 to the damage, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, that's uh, the shovel's going to be even better. But if I middle click on the shovel and press Q to wield it, notice that I'm only getting 79 damage per second. And so when I use the long sword, pressing Q, I get uh, 123 damage per second, All right? So again, a little bit better on that. Let's see, make sure that my, and I guess also when I use the shovel, it was probably two handed. And so I took off my spiked shield to hold the, the shovel and notice that also brought down my damage per second. So, and it also brought my armor to negative 227. So I really need to make sure that I'm careful about what I'm picking up and holding. Let's go ahead and apply our spike shield again. Now we're at negative 430 on the armor again, which is great. And pressing the Q shows back at 160 damage per second. So that's where we want to be. Don't accidentally grab my two-handed shovel. <laughs> Less damage and it takes our shield out of the usage slot. At that point, I am ready for the next adventure. And so I'm going to look at, in these permanent apartments, notice I'm at permanent apartments here, stepping on this mat, 1,000 gold it's going to take to get in a permanent apartment where I can store my things. So that'll be one of my upcoming quests and maybe another reason to go back into the goblin's den and try to get more of those things, bring them back up. Uh, in the meantime, let me go ahead and show over here in the Temple of Mostrai. If we apply this and run up into here, back around to the back side of this building, there's a hole right here. We go in there and peek up around in here. It says, all who enter read this so if we read this here it says the estimated level one should be or one should be estimated level 10 these in this random dungeon so there's about 49 or 50 levels of dungeon down here and indeed it does get really difficult but the first level or two is probably not that bad and if i enter there's this one guy here and i can attack him a few times more than a few perhaps checking my hit points he's pretty he's hitting me quite a bit it's not dying very easily but as you can see I um, uh, not taking a ton of damage either so one of the things that I could do oh, let's see if I can end up killing him or I have to run away and there we go finally kill him so that's part of the challenge with this uh, dungeon right here is at my level 5 character even with this good weapon that I have and this good armor that I have killing one of these guys was took a long time very challenging and what if I was surrounded by three or you know four or five of them and knows how wide these uh, pathways are but look at all this good stuff so I'm just gonna start to pick up some of these items and look I mean, we're getting tons of gold. Other items. Now this is a place where I might say, rather than picking up each one, one at a time, we might want to turn on um, auto pickup, right? And so what I could do is I can um, say help pickup and I can see right here, if I scroll up a little bit, 
I can say pick up a certain type or plus a certain type and I can use some things like inhibit, stop, debug if I wanted to do that. But there are things I can choose um, food, drink, valuables. And I can have pluses or minuses in front of those if I wanted to pick up or not pick up certain things there. In the graphical uh, client, there's a way that we can choose the pickup as well. And I'm going to pick up um, valuables, monies, and gems. So now when I just walk over money and gems, oops, I guess just picking up the gems, but not the, not some of the other things. Uh, we might want to pick up food and magic items, potions, wands, jewelry, all that other kind of stuff as well. And then when we walk over things, I'm still not picking up everything. I wish there was a uh, way to pick up, or just one button, to pick up everything. In fact, I think there probably is, if I remember correctly. There's a way that we can um, there we go. There's a way that we can type in on the command that we want to pick up everything. So here, um, I'm picking up things that have a, a good weight ratio. And if it's not a good weight ratio of uh, value, and my character isn't picking it up. So that's why they're not picking up some things. But this might be a little quicker to pick up things. Just have your pickup on. And just walk through and pick all this stuff up. And of course, this map resets every two hours. So as long as you can kill that one guy, and even if you can't, you could spend some time running away from him, picking up valuables as you're running away. And let's just see how much value we get from just this one level. Look at all this stuff. Lots of goodies here, especially for alchemists. Okay, and if we read this, what, what does it say here? I think it's just going to say level one, yep, level one. Like I said, about 49 levels to this. And let's, since we're here, let's just peek into what level two is going to look like. Um, so if we go down, I'm going to stay on the stairs. There's some interesting gadgets that are here. And again, I can just start picking up this stuff before anybody runs across my path. I do want to stay close to the stairs. See, there's a hammer that just appeared right there. Someone threw it. I'll try to run away from these guys. There will be some guys in here. Trust me. <laughs> Although I sure don't see anybody in level two. That's interesting. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe he got killed by the bullet. In fact, if we scroll up, I wonder if we'll find out... Um, I don't see anything there. It is possible for the monsters to get killed by traps and stuff in here as well. Let's go down one more level. Again, they will get more difficult. I want to stay close to the stairwell. But may as well pick up some stuff while we're down here. So there's a guy. This guy might be pretty easy to kill. The, the priests. Yeah, pretty easy to kill. I 
I'm able to get down pretty deep in here. Let's go down one more, why not? All right. So again, I can run, you can run away, but as you can start to see, there becomes more and more of these guys. And if they surround you to a place and trap you in, then you're going to be really messed up, right? Ah. So I need to get out of there pretty quick. All right. Anyway, I think that uh, proves a point. And then you can run around a little bit. Pick some stuff up. Stay close to the doors until you know the types of creatures that are the levels of guys that are there. Let's just see. Let's not step on this trap at all. Let's just see what we were able to get from that little excursion. And we're back out. All right. So over here, I'm just going to drop all my stuff. The only thing that we're going to take in are the nuggets that we picked up. I think we picked up a few other things that I dropped in here as well. So let me just double check. Uh, mercury, we got mercury. Found some rocks, blocks, lead, a couple piles of different things. Maybe those moonstones we got in there too so I'll pick those back up here all right so now I have how much money on me no money at all so let's drop all this stuff and see what we we brought in piles piles river stones rocks blocks mercury Emeralds, four rubies, some sapphires, and I guess that's probably, oops, 14 more piles of that. And it looks like that is probably it. So 89 platinum from that one run. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, a lot more. Those, those gold nuggets, and large gold nuggets, 272 platinum. It's a huge amount for running in through that dungeon couple of levels and not really doing a whole lot of fighting. I think we killed one guy, uh, one fighter and one priest, and then we were done. So pretty easy to do. Lots of platinum. Do that a couple more times. You'll be good to go. Let me pick this stuff back up here. And now I can come back. Oh, and I guess I also picked up that chain mail from him and the shield. I doubt that these things are going to be better than what I already have, so I'm just going to sell them. If you wanted to check those out later, you could yourself. I'll hold on the sacks. I like that. You can put stuff in there. Don't need those bottles. One platinum for those bottles. For stones, I guess. They weren't interested in the river stones. All right. All right. Very good. And now we are done with our adventure. So we'll come back up to the inn and call it quits for that one. All right, folks. So what we saw here is we got, uh, now we're up to level four of one-handed weapons. We've increased our disarm and find traps a little bit, increased our literacy a little bit. 
or total level five right now, about halfway through that level, our experience, 23.9. Actually, I guess we're pretty close to actually to level six, even though this slider bar doesn't really show it. Um, food uh, is okay. And I've got a couple of more whey breads if I need that. I think the whey breads are gonna give 600 food points. So probably won't use those until we get down to about 300 for the food. And uh, hit points, looks like we're up to 89 now, which is great. Uh, armor is much better, lower armor class of negative four and a higher armor uh, absorption rate of 30 is great. Lower weapon class by just a little bit. I think we started with 18, so now it's down to 17 but greater damage. Again, I made a bind key for my statistics command with the Q key. Shows me I've got 160 points of damage per second now. Higher the better on that, of course. It looks like here, look at this. When I, uh, when I died, I might have uh, lost a power point um, a little earlier. So I might be looking for potion of restoration perhaps store these and um, so let's do q at first to see what this is i've got a level five i'm going to do a minor potion of life as long as i'm i think under level six or seven so let's drink that you feel your power returned it's now when i press the q button again you'll see here that i have gotten back up to my power level of two everything else i think the same as it was before, we're good. And that's why it's good to have those potions of life. If you get up to past level seven, I think it is, these minor potions of life won't help you. So you'll need something a little bit bigger. And our game gives out these hourly prizes um, for things, including these supreme potions of life, which will help as well. And so next time we'll go and pick up things from the post office also, but for now, I think that's um, where we want to be. I'll go ahead and post this video, see if there's any responses to it, and um, hear what y'all want me to do for a quest for the next, next quest. All right, guys. Had fun. Let's see if y'all can do this. And remember, this was a quest that I ran through, and of course, I took a little bit longer. The, the video itself we did a whole lot more things than just go get the, um, the head of the Goblin Chief. But I was offering $50 for someone to run through this Goblin Head quest a couple of weeks ago, right? Now, of course, I did it so quickly because I already knew what to do. And so you, if I offer something like that again, um, you would need to practice and get a little bit more skill. But uh, then you should be able also to run through something pretty quick and, and have a chance to win that money. So um, hopefully y'all will play and say hi in the game when you come in. Love to say hi to y'all. I'll give you a special gift if you tell me that you were watching the stream. And um, I'll chat with y'all soon.